Hello everyone, I'm Rado and today I'm going to do online masterclass for you. I have a grade 6 exam piece submitted by a student uh, which I'm going to review for you and demonstrate. Okay, let us listen to the beginning. Okay, we shall stop here for a while. As you can hear, the student is playing quite well um, and is managing with the complex texture of the piece. Um, the so-called subject is well shaped, well presented, and in both right and left hands. I can just uh, spot a little inaccuracies in the articulation and especially in shaping the non-legato notes, which is a common mistake. Sometimes students do not really look for melodical line when they have a non-legato or staccato notes. Uh, and also, the student is holding unnecessarily two of the quavers in the right-hand part. For example, in bar two, the last quaver that <coughs> I'm pointing now, she's unnecessarily holding, which I think should be a light note. And in bar six, again, at the end of the right hand part, the note that I'm pointing right now. So these notes are quavers like all the others, and I don't think should be overheld there. So I would recommend to play the non-legato notes first legato so we can feel the melodical line in them. For example, something like this. And this is the end. So the student is holding the note extra and also the note it becomes a little bit heavier which doesn't really suit at the end of the subject. So I'll show it one more time. And after we feel the melodical lines in the non-legato notes, we can try to play them with the required articulation, which really suits the style of the piece. But then we have well-shaped notes. Okay, let's carry on with another part of the piece. Okay, let's stop here. Um, as I said before that the student is playing quite well and managing the piece quite uh, good. It sounds all right. Uh, I just spotted uh, two little hiccups. In bar 11, the place that I'm pointing right now here, um, I guess this is due to some not suitable fingering. And the other place was in bar 13, again in the right hand. But this is a common problem for students with small hands. As you can see, the interval is a ninth, and it's a quite big distance for students with small hands. So they can't really play smooth this part. So for bar 11, we can just use the suggested fingering, which uh, works quite well here or any other suitable fingering will do. Of course, the fingering, the problem with the fingering is that 
we can always use other fingerings than the suggested, but as long as it's not affect our musical outcome. So we can use other fingering, but we have to keep the musical outcome. So uh, for the other place, I would suggest if your hand is small and you can't reach this interval, like what I can do, you can just play softer and lighter the F sharp, the first note, and aim for the G sharp. I'll purposely do it and I'll pretend that my hand is small and I can't reach that. So we are playing very soft and light the F sharp and then we are aiming for the G sharp. Which it sounds pretty smooth. We are kind of doing a mental legato. Okay, let's listen to the rest of the piece. Okay, that was lovely, the ending was good, and again, I'll say one more time, the student is managing quite well. Um, of course, I can recommend a little bit faster speed, which I think it suits more to the nature of this invention, and it would make it sound uh, more flowing, and it's easier to phrase and to, to shape uh, and of course to manage the texture. Uh, usually these kind of pieces are quite difficult to interpret, especially for students with less exposure. As you can see, <coughs> there are no performance directions at all. We only have the notes. And the composer didn't leave us anything else. So we need to have a very solid uh, foundations and we, we, we need to have a very good understanding about this music to be able to analyze it and interpret it. So <clears throat> as I said, a little bit faster, I think it will suit more and it will make it sound really different. In terms of shape and phrasing, I think the student is shaping quite well uh, the subject in both right and left hand. But the student can improve a little bit more on the overall shape of the piece. Okay, let us try a little bit faster, uh, which I think is, is the better decision about the speed here. As you can see, the music flows much better. And usually for young students, I think this beat is better. It will help them a lot in terms of phrasing and shape. All right, another a uh, suggestion that I have here, apart from the slightly faster speed, is how to generally shape the piece. So imagine the piece is uh, like uh, uh, an artwork or like something else that it needs to have a climax, it needs to have a beginning and ending. So the beginning is kind of introduction. So the composer is introducing us the material of the music, which the student is doing quite well. She's shaping very well the subject, which I'm pointing here. 
uh, in both right and left hands. After that, right after this moment, the so-called introduction, we have uh, we have a sequence, which is a very common method, composition method in this uh, Baroque pieces, and not only. Uh, usually, when we have a sequence, we need to do something with it. We need to either uh, get louder or get softer. In this particular piece, I would suggest to build up the sequence and to get louder because right after the sequence, the piece is modulating to the relative key of C major, which the beginning is in A minor. The piece is in A minor. So by building up the sequence, we will reach a louder dynamic and much brighter sound, which it suits very well to the major. Here is the highest pitch we have in this piece. So I would suggest that here we are playing, we keep the louder dynamic, and right after that it starts another sequence, which is this time descending. So we will probably do this sequence progressively getting softer and we will reach this moment where the piece goes to, we can hear in the left hand, the triad of E minor. So as you can see for a very short time we are going through, we starting in A minor, we are going to the relative C major and now we are going to minor again. And we have this moment before the subject appears again like the beginning in bar 18. So from bar 13 till bar 17 we have this very special place. You can treat it as expressive but to me it sounds a little bit mysterious and it's um, quite special, which is again another descending sequence. So we can maybe think of a little bit um, more mysterious way of playing and at the same time expressive. So we are returning to the beginning, uh, sorry, to the subject which is the same as this beginning here in bar 18, but the only one time that hands, both hands are doing the semi quaver line is in bar 18, sorry, in bar 19. Okay, in bar 18, the subject appears again as it is at the beginning, and right after that, in bar 19, we have the first and only one place where ha both hands are playing the semi-quaver line together. So that place the student is playing quite well, but however is a dangerous place to, 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 to make it sound like rather mechanical, but she's, she's playing it quite well. Uh, through this place we are going to a lower register of the piano in bar 20 and 21, which I think it requires deeper sound and it will prepare well the ending, the so-called conclusion. So bar 20 and 21 we can get a little louder, but the beginning of bar 22 we need to get softer and prepare the final climax. And as you can see starting from bar 22 we can just go progressively louder to bar 24 and to the highest note B here and after that we can just get softer and of course a little retardando at the end it suits very much and it shows us that this is the end of the piece. All right that's all for today and please feel free to approach us in case you need my help and stay tuned with us.